As we embark on this post-Roe era, we take a look back at how we got to this point in history. After almost 50 years, Roe is finally done for. Two of the outspoken voices who lived through the Roe v. Wade decision are Jeannie Mancini, president of the March for Life, and Chuck Donovan, president of the Charlotte Lozier Institute. In recent interviews, Mancini has said that the fight to end abortion is far from over. Meanwhile, Donovan has been vocal about his opposition to President Biden's pro-abortion agenda. Jeannie Mancini and Chuck John Donovan join me now. Thank you both so much for being with me. You both lived through the 1973 Roe v. Wade Supreme Court decision, and you've been at the forefront of this movement for decades. So tell us what you're thinking now that Roe has been struck down. Jeannie, I'll start with you. Well, I, I'm really just in awe in some ways that this moment has come. Um, I'm still just, just really celebrating and, and taking it in. Uh, and yet, <laughs> also thinking about what is to come, because there is so much ahead, and we're really in a new season, uh, as so many of us have been saying here, so excited to think a little bit more about the states, um, and also about, you know, increasing that safety net that we've all been thinking and talking about, which is already so strong, as, as we know, in the movement, but making that even stronger. Yes, and Chuck, what are your thoughts? Well, I think we're in a moment of incredible opportunity, but there's certainly some risk. The abortion industry has changed over the years. They haven't grown the physician core that they wanted to have. Uh, many places are actually pausing or stopping abortions, and they're revert reverting to the abortion pill, which I think is a desperate and medically risky approach uh, to work directly with women and deliver them medications that actually increase their risk. So we'll have to adjust our strategies and be more about talking directly to, to women, as Jeannie mentioned. Right, absolutely. And, and Jeannie, you have said that the end of Roe is just the beginning. Explain what you mean by that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm taking this famous Winston Churchill quote uh, after the Battle of El Amin, where he was asked, is this the end? And he said, oh, no, no, it's not the end. It's, it's not even the beginning of the end, but perhaps it's the end of the beginning. And that is how I see, and I think many of us see this, it's like we're moving into phase two now. Um, where the, really this goes back to the people, you know, in their vote particularly and, and in a special way at the level of the states, not that we won't have our work cut out for us uh, legislatively at the federal level too, but at the March for Life, we're very committed to a state march program um, where this year alone we've been in five states and we plan to over the next five to six years be in all states. Very exciting. It's so important to be active in those states on the local level now. And, and Chuck, you recently released a statement saying President Biden continues his see no evil, hear no evil, report no data on evil mindset. Explain what you mean by that. Well, it's so disappointing, Prudence. You know, I've, I've worked with senators for three or four decades on this issue and saw Joe Biden in, in various modes, including a mode where he was opposed to abortion. He was supportive of the Hyde Amendment. Uh, now he seems captive to the most extreme elements of his party. They're talking about, I think ludicrously, about placing abortion clinics on federal property. They're even exploring doing it on Indian reservations. I don't think those reservations want anything to do with the abortion industry. So uh, let's hope we can check this administration and then we have the power of the vote Hopefully we can modify it and influence our country in a pro-life direction yes, across the board. That's right. And Jeannie, you've led the March for Life for almost 10 years now, but some people might not know the very first march was in 1974, the year right after Roe was, was decided. And now that that decision has been overturned, I wondered if you could tell us what next year's march is going to look like here in D.C. So, well, for starters, we will march. I've been asked quite a bit, you know, hey, do we still need to march now that Roe is overturned? And my question back is, has abortion become unthinkable in the United States? Like, yes, we've reached this, this incredible moment in history in, in building a culture of life, but we have our work cut out for us, folks. Um, so we will continue to march, and the next march will be the 50th annual March for Life and the first post-Roe post March for Life on January 20th. So I hope all of your viewers will plan to be there. I know. I can't wait to be there. And to both of you, we're seeing backlash on all fronts in reaction to the Dobbs decision from the Biden administration, as you've said, Chuck, big corporations, celebrities, they're all lying to women about what this decision means. So how should our movement be responding? Chuck, I'll start with you. Well, 
I think the other side has indicated they want a summer of rage. I think our attitude needs to hold firm and calm, and we're seeking a summer of service. Uh, come the fall, we'll seek a summer of election uh, for a new path for the country. But women need to see that the pro-life movement, which has done a remarkable thing, we have changed a constitutional ruling that was invalid from the start. We did it with peaceful activity. We did it with marching in Washington, D.C., and I was talking with uh, Jeannie without really a single arrest for of anyone for disorderly conduct. conduct. And uh, here we are. This is a model of how civic peaceful change can happen. We need to plow straight ahead with the same spirit. Amen. And Jeannie, any final thoughts from you? I think it's a particular moment for pro-lifers to also just continue to try as hard as possible, it might be a little hard, to treat uh, every person with great dignity and respect, knowing that, you know, life is not necessarily about fighting louder, but it's about uh, being loving. Life is loving. And, and so to be that way with people who disagree with us, because that will win their hearts and melt their hearts, and, and never to forget praying and fasting about this. This is a spiritual battle at its heart. Amen. Could not agree more. And I'm so honored to have you both on the show this week. Thank you for everything that you have done for the unborn and everything that you'll continue to do. Jeannie Mancini of March for Life and Chuck Donovan of the Charlotte Lozier Institute. Thanks for having us.